What's up, YouTube? Now, before I get to the specific topic of the day, I want to first tell a story that I think kind of uh, is a good way to start off the talk. Um, so back in 2012, I competed in a powerlifting meet. And I remember this one specific lift. I will never forget this one specific lift. Uh, this guy went up to press, I think it was like 300 plus pounds. And he wasn't a new lifter. I think he, he was a veteran lifter. He actually, he was in his 50s or so. And I remember he laid down on the bench and it was his second attempt. And um, so it wasn't a really difficult weight for him. And um, so he unracks the weight. He then goes to descend and uh, he then goes, he gets to the bottom, he gets the command from the judges, he then begins to push the weight, the weight is ascending, and then the bar falls. Now, the bar fell, I remember it bouncing off of his chest once, coming up off of his chest, and then falling down again, so it bounced twice. A 300 plus pound barbell bouncing off of a human torso. I remember the way it looked. I remember the way it sounded when the when the bar fell on him. It was horrible. So an ambulance was called. He was taken to the hospital. And I remember later on, we found out that he'd broken like four ribs and his sternum had broken in half. So his chest, his chest plate broke in half. I remember moments after that happened, I looked back at my mom and my wife and they were packing up my stuff because I was not gonna be lifting that day. They'd already said I wasn't gonna be competing anymore that day. But um, I remember I did actually get to lift later on. And um, you best believe that when I went to lift, my grip was extremely firm on that barbell. I wasn't about to let it happen. The gentleman in question was using what's known as a false grip or what's commonly known amongst uh, lifters as a suicide grip. So the difference between the regular bench press grip and the false grip or suicide bench press is um, the fact that in a regular grip your thumb is wrapped around the barbell and on the suicide grip your thumb is on top of the barbell with the other fingers now the difference is obviously the regular grip is going to be a lot more secure because even though the thumb is just one digit that one digit can be the difference between having a secure grip and having a lot of weight fall down on top of you. So before that day, I'd gone back and forth between the regular grip and the suicide grip. But after that day, I left that suicide grip alone. I mean, every now and then, like I'd say like once every couple months, I might find myself doing it and then I'll revert back to the regular thumbs around grip uh, really soon. Now, I'm not judging this gentleman, I'm not judging him, I'm not judging anybody who chooses to use the false grip, but it is definitely worth saying, sometimes we can know that something might be a bad idea or there may be a safer way to do something. It's not until we see that negative aspect of what you're doing, see it for ourselves, uh, until we might change things. And I'm telling you right now, I saw that and I, it's one of the worst things I have ever seen. I've been to war, I've seen a lot of things. And I can tell you to this day that watching that 300 pound barbell fall on that man was one of the worst things ever. Why do we do the false grip? It's dangerous, but there is a benefit to the false grip. And a lot of people would say that when you remove a joint, you know, when your thumb is around the barbell, your wrist joint is involved in the movement now. And when you remove the joint, you're automatically going to be stronger. That does have something to do with it, but uh, after reading Pavel Satsulian's uh, Power to the People, I believe Power to the People 2, um, I really I found out another reason why, and that's because we have these mechanoreceptors in our palms, uh, roughly about there, that are actually responsible for uh, sensing the amount of the load that you're lifting when you're actually when you're engaged in any kind of pressing movement uh it senses uh what's being lifted and it then sends feedback to the triceps and it tells the triceps how hard to contract and it's it's involuntary so a lot of us don't know it but we're actually tapping into those mechanoreceptors more efficiently when we remove our thumb from the bar and use the false grip or suicide grip. Nothing against anybody who chooses to do that, but like I said before, seeing is believing, and it is certainly not worth it to me uh, to risk my health and risk my welfare so I can lift maybe a few more pounds uh, in the bench press. Also, 
uh, what's less known is that wrapping your thumb around the bar also comes with its added benefits. For one, and I noticed when I wrapped my thumb around the bar, it allowed me to achieve a much stronger grip, a much more, much more firm grip on the barbell uh, rather than when I use the thumbs off grip. Now with this stronger grip came a lot more control and a lot better uh, stabilization of the weight. Um, you're stabilizing muscles in the bench press, uh, your traps, your back, your biceps. These are all responsible for stabilizing, for allowing you to push off of a stable platform. And so with a stronger grip, I felt that I had a lot more control and I could uh, impl employ uh, a larger quantity of muscle groups in the movement rather than just the pushing muscle groups, you know, chest, shoulders, and triceps. Um, I've talked about before the correlation between uh, grip strength and bench press strength, or more importantly, I talked about uh, using hammer curls to increase your bench press. And this is always something that I felt helped me out a lot. In fact, one thing I do psychologically when I'm lifting is with every rep, I'm thinking of my grip kind of like a ratchet. And every time I engage in a rep, it's ratcheting down harder and harder and my grip gets tighter and tighter. And I, it allows me to employ a lot more control over the weight when I'm lifting. So like I said, this video has nothing to do with judgment of anyone who chooses to do the false grip or the conventional grip. I just wanted people to be informed in reference to the reason why they may be making the choice for the false grip. A lot of people asked me before, why do they feel that they're stronger uh, using a false grip rather than wrapping their uh, thumb around the bar? This is uh, what I found. Now, if you guys know different, please comment below. Let me know. Uh, we can discuss it. Um, please like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you for watching, guys. Take care.